Bronx Horns uh, group has been around for quite a while. This is titled Second Wind, and it's from their 2003 album, Catch the Feeling. This is Lead Stories. I'm Utrice Lead, and it is Free Your Mind Friday on Lead Stories. Uh, first, I ought to... Uh, bring you up to snuff with what's happening with me. I'm trying to ease out of this flu, but I've had uh, some pretty serious bouts <laughs> with uh, just feeling woozy. And uh, at other times, I just am so sleepy. Uh, they were testing the fire alarms here not too long ago, just a couple of days ago. And then I heard this furious pounding on the door. Uh, turns out I slept right through it. Didn't hear a thing. But I'm going to be right as rain, not too short from now. Not too long, I mean, from now. And uh, I'll be back in fine form. But until then, I thank you for your indulgence. And those of you calling to find out how I'm doing and what's going on. It's just that I, I had the flu. I still have it, but not to the degree I had it before. So I'm on the mend, even if I sound a little nasal. So this is Free Your Mind Friday, and you get to take the conversation wherever you want it to go, uh, expressing one hopes, a considered opinion that we can uh, react to. And given the events of this week, we should have so many opinions about what went on and what will continue to go on. So... You, you set the pace. It is your program. As you know, I'm pretty adamant about it, that you, you ought to have some space to say what you want and to engage with others in forming ideas and uh, sharing information. And that's one of the best ways to use radio. Bill from New Jersey. Oh, by the way, the number is 888-874-4888 is the number to call. 888-874-4888. We start off with you, Bill, from New Jersey. Good afternoon, Utrice. Hello, Bill. How are you? All right. Uh, I'm sure I don't have to tell you about mega-dosing on vitamin C. I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, your relation to Gary Knoll, uh, you already know about that. But... Oh, I... Taken every color of vitamin C there is. Uh, do you take uh, vitamin C crystals, which is my preference, uh, which comes either buffered or, or non-buffered, uh, and uh, it's a way to get uh, the vitamin C into your system uh, very quickly. It's a, you can dissolve it in juice, and it, it's really quite a revelation for those that don't know about it. Oh, I have not, not had crystals. Yeah, vitamin C crystals, uh, you can only buy it in a health food store, and they're, they're actually trying to, to ban it because it works so well. Uh, and I've seen people, uh, I've recommended it uh, quite a few times, and I, I've seen someone uh, take a teaspoon of vitamin C crystals, which is about 17 times the RDA, uh, dissolves very easily in juice, water, whatever. Uh, and uh, if you catch uh, a cold or flu at the at the outset, you you take that before bed, and you can wake up in the morning feeling normal. It's pretty amazing stuff. Well, I look it's forward to to feeling normal. I've never felt normal <laughs> in my entire yeah, I mean, life. Once, so that once may get flu, you there. <laughs> yeah, once it takes hold, it's. A flu or a cold takes hold. It's it's hard to get rid of, but if you can catch it early, uh, it's pretty easy to get rid of. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, what I called for today is to 
to try to give some relief to those that are upset, depressed, uh, feeling down about the the times, political and otherwise. Um, I, I have a simple solution, although it, it, it's not always simple to, to put into practice, which is to stop paying attention to that which does not further uh, your uh your health and well-being and your family's health and well-being. Uh, it's called paying attention because your attention is is probably, in my opinion, the most valuable thing that you have complete control over, that everyone has their complete control over. And what you pay your attention, uh, just like giving money to something, um, is where your your uh your life goes if you pay attention to uh propaganda to celebrity to advertising to who wake makes how much money and wears what brand and drives what kind of car um then that's where your your life goes and and there's stress involved with that there's there's always somebody with more of this or more of that uh, but if you pay your attention to the health and well-being of you and your family and those you come in contact with, that is a uh, payment that has a 100% return. I, I don't know of anything in life that returns uh, paying your attention to health um, it, You can pay your attention to your career and it not go the way you want. You can pay your attention to a relationship, and it doesn't pan out like you want. Uh, but if you pay attention to your health, uh, the the things you eat, uh, the exercise you do, um, it always uh, returns on investment. And there's really nothing more important than your health and your family's health. Uh, impeachment, I mean, that's going to happen. Uh, who gets elected? Yeah, I, I personally don't really care that much uh, at the presidential level. Um, mayor, yeah, that affects me, but president doesn't affect me. Uh, so, uh, pay change what you pay attention to is 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 what I'm saying. You know, who won? Uh, who wins the Super Bowl? That that's meaningless in your life. Uh, you know, and what other people are doing that you'll never come in contact with. Uh, meaningless in your life. Don't 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 pay attention to propaganda. You pay attention to yourself. That's 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 my message. And I know that that's a uh, very that, good message. And I take it to heart. People. It's a very very good message because uh, literally, um, when you don't pay attention, you you actually become sicker. Yes. In so many different ways, not just physically, yes. but yes. mentally, psychologically. So it's a very good piece of advice. And I thank you for starting out our program on such a positive, positive note today. Hope thank you, you so better. much. Thanks, Bill. 888-874-4888. What have you to say? I mean, what's going on in your life what thoughts are you entertaining in your your wonderful cranium that you think you should share? Uh, are you reacting at all to what's going on in Washington? Despite, of course, we just heard from Bill who said, don't pay attention to that. I'm sure you have some, some ideas. I'm sure you have some reactions, things that you uh, noticed for the time. And funny that he should say this because I've reached the point, I've had it with this this uh, charade in Washington. I've had it. And uh, it, the more you listen to it, as a thinking person, the more depressed you get. I really felt it. I'm not kidding you. Think that this is the level uh, that we have sunken to. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. The people, the, the, the expressed thoughts, their actions. It is so depressing. 
that this is what is governing this country and seeking to govern uh, and control much of the world. I have never really remembered myself feeling so depressed about government uh, since about 20 years ago when I decided I'm, I'm not going to vote. There, there's nothing attracting me to that whole process, and yet uh, it was the thing I looked forward to. Uh, I really, really was excited. I was an excited and dedicated voter. And uh, I told the story a couple of times that there I was in the voting booth. In fact, there was a, a group of us uh, voters who would arrive at the polling station much earlier than the people setting it up. <laughs> we actually had time uh, to, to get a cup of coffee or something. Uh, and then came, you know, the, the polling station was opened up and I'm in the voting booth and I was so outraged, you know, the, the descriptions of, of projects and initiatives that we were supposed to vote on and insufficient information, in some cases no information, just vote, pick a name and vote. Uh, this was for judges. And uh, I said, this is, this is beyond insulting. This is an outrage. And right there in the voting booth, it, you know, the, the days of the voting booth where you have to pull that lever, I just said, no, I'm done. I refuse to be uh, insulted this way as a voter. And uh, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to permit myself to be insulted this way. And I'm not going to go through this process not one more time. And that's how my voting, my interest in voting came to an end. I haven't missed it uh, because I see that there was a progression uh, downhill over the years. And uh, I just refuse to be part of it. I feel, I, I said, I didn't intend to not vote forever. I said to myself, I won't vote unless there is a compelling reason. There has to be a compelling reason for me to vote. And truth be told, there hasn't been a compelling reason to vote. Not even when Barack Obama ran, ran for president for the first time, or even the second. I didn't vote. I just didn't find a compelling reason to vote based on the way things were going. I didn't want to be part of it. But that doesn't mean I, I'm uninvolved. I'm very much involved. I'm very much, I think, I follow politics closely but I just don't want to be part of it. I really don't. But Bill, you kind of renewed an idea, and that is uh, turn my attention elsewhere so that I don't give myself more agita than I need. That's a very good piece of advice. I'll certainly consider it. 888-874-4888. Where are you people today? You're kind of slowing down, just like me. <laughs> you have the flu too, or, or you're just slowing down. I don't get it. We'll take, is it time for a break? No, it's not time for a break yet. Um, many things are happening, and not all of them good. And uh, what I wish we would do, more than anything else, I wish we would organize ourselves 
and the communities in which we live, to concentrate on that, to really organize and form, in effect, uh, our own little government, regulating how we live and how our communities operate, because there's every indication that that concept has fallen apart almost completely. We don't have cohesive communities anymore to speak of. We should really take uh, an interest in revitalizing our communities. David, you're on the air from Brooklyn. Good afternoon, Eutrice. I hope you're feeling Hello. much better. <laughs> I, I, I want to uh, take off the ball from uh, one of the last uh, days. And I remember Ed mentioned that uh, the uh, framers of the Constitution in this country uh, were concerned about the taxes and uh, rebelling against uh, paying taxes and whatnot. Uh, but I think it'd be very, also very important to talk about what uh, Professor Horn says, that the uh, ruling class in this country, who uh, run the country then as well as now, uh, were concerned with the uh, British Empire ending slavery in the United States. Uh, you know, slavery was illegal to uh, uh, kidnap people in Africa and bring them here and enslave them. So they were thinking about that, and uh, they didn't want slavery to end here. I think that's very important information that uh, Professor Horn has brought to us, because it did end in the Caribbean region uh, for the British Empire. Um, also, I want to mention uh, something that I talk about quite often, which is throwing a bone. Throwing a bone and what I mean by it. I think it's important for people to understand uh, what I mean when I talk about that. In other words, uh, this is not a democracy, as I've said a number of times. And it is run by people uh, who are at the top, the ruling class, in their interests. However, the only way they can run it is by the poor people who are at the bottom, every once in a while, giving them something extra. It may be a bone, and it may be a bone with a little meat on it. And as it goes along, and uh, they have uh, defanged anyone who is uh, thinking about rebellion. Uh, when the time comes, they take things back, you see. So during the uh, uh, 30s, uh, during the uh, Roosevelt administration, uh, they took out the bones, the um, Social Security and all the other things they put in there about the federal jobs and whatnot. But as time went on, those things have been slowly uh, either taken back or diminished somehow. So the ruling class doesn't want people to have Social Security, even though the people have to pay for it. So what they have done is try to slowly uh, diminish it somehow. Uh, such as uh, reducing the age uh, for uh, uh, young people who are on Social Security, uh, uh, getting Social Security when the parents die, for example. And uh, when they want to give a bone out, uh, that's what they do. So the bone is only given out when there is a need to pacify or slow down the people and their desire for uh, the betterment of their lives. And any can way they can, they take it back. So uh, right now, they, they took it back 
with the big tax cuts that they gave to the rich people, the ruling class. They have taken it back uh, any way they can, uh, such as reducing uh, the food stamps for the real impoverished people. They, they will take back things such as uh, that uh, or by putting provisions in it that you have to work for them for free to get a, a social benefit. And this is what they do. So we have to look at the fact that you got the ruling class at the top. I think this is important at less than that 1%. You, know, you have the professional class who helps, helps the ruling class run things and keep order. And at the bottom, you have the poorest people. And the poorest people have to provide the uh, muscle power for the army uh, as they go about their imperial uh, agenda all over the world. And they're the ones that get killed and whatnot and hurt in Vietnam and so forth. And that's another reason why they got rid of the draft. The draft uh, included people of all those groups, the uh, ruling class, the professional class, the middle class, and the people at the bottom. But with a no draft, you make it a poverty draft by getting your people from the lower uh, uh, quartile uh, and uh, putting them in the army and the armed forces. And that, that works fine with the ruling class. You're not going to get any rebellion from those who are rich and powerful about the draft. So what I'm saying is uh, the bones are thrown out only when there's some kind of danger from rebellion from the lower classes of people who are mostly in that bottom half, which are people who are in poverty or near poverty. And I think that's important. Is there a reason? Is, might that explain why uh, no bones are being thrown out? Uh, because the 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 lower classes have not really rebelled. That's right. They have not rebelled. I mean, they're not like the French yellow vests or anything like that. They they uh, are pretty well been pacified, and uh, as uh, very effectively by those who rule, uh, because all the uh, areas of information like schools and media and television, radio, uh, pretty much under the control. So they pretty well neutralize the people so they don't uh, rebel. And this is a sad thing because uh, the people have been tamed. They've been tamed. Uh, and this brings it to what we have in going on right now with this uh -huh. uh, so-called impeachment that is not going to uh, really uh, work because the uh, t t a division of the ruling class party, the Uniparty, is not going to let uh, Trump uh, go, and they're going to keep it there. What comes to my mind is the, the fact that all this energy, all this energy by those uh, crooks that are sitting in the Congress is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. They ought to be thinking about what they can do to benefit the people who live in the country. And, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you have all this uh, show going on, but the, the, what people need, I hear no one talking about. We're in a situation where people don't have pensions. The Social Security system uh, doesn't, uh, that's on their attack. The, on the Bush and Obama, they tried to somewhat turn it over to the financial in industry. And uh, what we need to do is have a, a Social Security system that is in, like a pension system for all people in the country. 
not uh, a small amount that is given out for many people in Social Security, but a, a living amount for people to live in. And that could be done. Uh, and that's not talked about, uh, as well as the other social things that people need, like health care and um, uh, things like housing. I see no reason why we can't go back to uh, the housing authorities when they were building public housing. I think public housing ought to be available for anyone who wants it. Uh, and uh, you pay according to your income. So there shouldn't be uh, dependence on uh, private landlords to provide housing for people. There should be no people that do not have housing. And that could be done. So, But we're wasting our money on military expenditures, which is uh, really a subsidy for the rich and the powerful who own the uh, military in industries. They call it the defense industries, but it's really the war industry. And, you know, that's a sad thing because that money should be going to benefit the people. We ought to have a, a tax system that is uh, progressive, not regressive like the ones that we have now, one we have now uh, all over at uh, federal and state and city level. You know, it's ridiculous. All these things are not looked at. So uh, as long as they can distract people with the circus, the Super Bowl and uh, other sports and uh, all the things they do, that gets people's attention away from the real issues, and they have these uh, prostitute-type persons in uh, Congress who uh, are getting paid by by uh, lobbyists thirty-five thousand uh, 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 thousand of uh, uh, lobbyists in Washington, and I guess my, many of the states, there's uh, large numbers also. So we're in a bad situation, and many of the people here are asleep with their eyes wide open. And as I mentioned before, they're being played uh, by well. three things. Ignorance and, you know, the, the, the point of racism, which is the major tool in the tool bag, and with the physical force by the slave patrols, police, and military. Well, thank you for your uh, considered opinion and uh, detailed overview. Thank you so much, David, for calling in today and contributing. Mitch from New York, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, yeah. my name is Mitch, New York. Uh, yeah, like what David was saying, I was at a meeting last night, a political meeting, and they were saying, like, over 400 bills are sitting out, not being voted on, not even brought to the floor because of this nonsense about the uh, him being thrown out of office. Everybody knows that's not going to happen. And I wonder how how much is this cost in the country? I mean, these guys get if you go to if you put a, a dollar figure on what's or what this is costing, it probably runs into the millions and millions of dollars. For what? For, so for nothing. Why, why do you say so confidently that everybody knows it's not going to happen? <laughs> Please. McConnell is not going to put Trump out of office. The, the, the GOP, they, they're quite satisfied with him. <laughs> you know, and they get, it's more them than the Democrats, and they're got, not going to vote him out of office. He's, they're probably setting him up for another a tax uh, increase for the wealthy. But what I really wanted to talk about was I went to a meeting last night, and they did, uh, it was a meeting on the uh, uh, black uh, infant mortality rates, and our rates is higher than any other ethnic group. More black women and black babies are dying at birth than in any other ethnic group. 
and nobody is really talking too much about it. You know, no questions are being asked. I mean, you talk to some of the uh, people that you think would be interested in it, and they they come up with the, they say, well, I knew this a long time ago. Well, if you knew it a long time ago, why hasn't the public been told about it? Why isn't something being done about it? From the report, as you gathered it, what were the main reasons? What were the main causes? They didn't come up with any causes at all. You know, it was just a meeting. Uh, uh, it was at the borough president's office in Brooklyn down here, and they didn't come up with the, any causes or any whys. The question wasn't even... What they were talking about is, well... How can we get funding? <laughs> you know, how can we get funding to uh, get the information out to the community? Well, my question is, do you really need that much funding? You know, uh, there has to be things that can be done without waiting on monies to come through, which might not never come through. Even the lady that was uh, given the presentation, she said how she was misdiagnosed and she lost a baby because of that and this is uh they got this book called medical apartheid i guess mm -hmm. it's still going on you know oh, yes, black it is. people it certainly black is. women being mixed misdiagnosed and mistreated in the hospitals and nobody's really talking about it too much well, why do you think that is happening? That nobody's well, talking it, about it, as you said. No, well, I don't know why our people aren't talking about it. You know, we're going along with the status quo about, oh, you know, that's the way it is. It's racism. That's, that's what it is. Well, we all know it's racism. We all know that, you know, but it should be something done within the community as far as getting uh, help for our women, putting that out, things that shit can be done without just saying, well, that's too bad. What wish... do you see as the... What, what do you see if this continues, if this trend continues? What do you see would be the result? The results? I don't understand that question. I mean, uh, the results are already there. I'm actually. What do you think people, is, is driving people, it? What do you think is. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Well, you know, they they were talking about the hospitals in our community. Brookdale is a big hospital, uh, Kings County, uh, Wyckoff. They're not doing enough to educate the women that's coming in there about the about prenatal care you know coming in for your exams it's not and one lady was saying she went to the hospital and she was pregnant and they told her they didn't have any beds she would have to go to another hospital and on her way to the hospital, she had a miscarriage and she lost the baby. And she almost died, too. Yeah. But I'm asking uh, people that are concerned to call the lawmakers and lawmakers up and tell them about that. The black infant mortality rate is higher in our community than any ethnic group across the board. Well, actually, you opened up and you hinted at it. You said people just, they know this, but this is true. The infant mortality rate is extremely high, not just among African Americans, but uh, among poor women. But there is a need to understand the ethnic uh, implications as well, because at one time, the infant mortality rate was highest among Native Americans. Um, there are all kinds of reasons, but most of it is, again, just 
neglect the government agencies that should be taking care of this and monitoring and trying to get services to uh, women who need it, they, they're they just not doing the job. And then they would say, well, we're not getting the funds to do the job. We, we have to do outreach. That costs money to get advertising and, you know, the public uh, enlightenment to get people in the public the public to understand what a crisis it is uh, because that is a direct measure of the quality of life, infant mortality rates. So it is safe to say, let's say like a city of New York, uh, where you have high infant mortality rates would be in areas with lower quality of life. And that hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. So the community itself, again, it has to get exercised about this. And it has to insist that attention be paid. Because I do know uh, there are communities that get incredible, excellent uh, infant care. Excellent health outreach. That's because they are kind of monolithic politically. They, they vote in, in one group and it's registered. People see that. These are the people who are voting. These are the people who will get the goodies. But we don't have people. We keep complaining all the time, but we still have to try to motivate people to become interested in themselves. We can't do it for them. Yeah. Well, I see it as, well, like I said, medical apartheid by this uh, lady that published this book. It's a very good book, and things haven't really changed that much. I mean, there was a time I can remember, like, we had midwives. We had uh, people, you know, you would have your babies, uh, and basically you would have them at home, and you had a lot... Uh, a higher a uh, higher rate of 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 births but now you know by depending on the system in itself it's not working you you even this girl to our Serena Williams today, when she was very, having a very day. urgent problem we really have to get uh our voices heard in whatever way we do it we but we have to do that Thanks for bringing it to our attention today, Mitch. Jose from Rosedale, you're on the air. Sir, and uh, I ha a happy new year to you of uh, good health, lots of happiness, uh, and I hope uh, much more wealth coming your way. Well, thank you. I could use it. Good, good, good. Now, uh, I listened to Brother David for quite some time, and this brother is on track. He's always been on track. I, I, I respect his, his, his opinion, and I believe that it's not until the uh, struggling, the, 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 the poor in the United States all come together across the color line understand what these rascals who run this country is doing to the rest of us. Not until they come together, we all come together of one mind and decide that we're going to do something about what is happening to us. You're going to have any changes. But as long as they continue to divide us the way they are doing, it will continue to have more of the same. But that's not what I call in about. I'm calling in because uh, there is a uh, um, an evil man was taken <clears throat> he's right now I believe he's still on the, the, the tropical island of Jamaica one uh, Mike Pompey and whenever these kind of people visit these small countries who think they are an independent entity whenever they visit them it always entails or conjure, they conjure up evil doings and, and, and in, in, these re, in the region, not only in the country, but in the region. 
And uh, I, right. in my Before humble opinion, my professor. Tell us, tell us, uh, what are you talking about? I'm not sure. Okay, good. Well, Michael Pompeo, I think it was the Secretary of State, is, is now visiting Jamaica. He has been successful in, in pulling away Jamaica, uh, uh, Haiti, and the Bahamas and a few of these other places, and they, they have created a little entity. You have the CARICOM, which is a, a, about 20-something uh, islands who so to come together in a unified form to see about issues that affect us in the Caribbean region. And as always, we have allowed ourselves to be divided and conquered. So the first thing Trump did was to invite them, uh, that same cabal, at uh, Mar-a-Lago. You remember last year? Pulled him away from uh, CARICOM, and uh, he, whatever was discussed there, we are still in the dark as to what transpired in, in that meeting in, in uh, Mar-a-Lago. Now they pull the same crew together. Now Pompeo is doing that. And uh, he's down there, and as I said, in my, we, we are only left to, to, to speculate because they don't come to us, the citizens. They don't feel that they have a right to come to us and tell us what they're doing on our behalf. So we have to speculate. We believe, I believe, that is, he's down there to create more problems for Venezuela, more problems for Cuba, He's there to, to they, they want to play out again this, this Cold War situation. The Chinese are down in Jamaica carving out their niche of the island. And the U.S. has been uh, ranting up, you know, raising cane about uh, uh, the Chinese in their, in their backyard, in their sphere of influence. And uh, here we go, we have a, a, a prime minister that is nothing but a vassal. He's there to, uh, to take his marching orders from the United States. As they have always done, the Labour Party in Jamaica is tantamount to being a, 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 a satellite of the, of the American Republican Party. Uh, we can see from the time of Michael Manley what ha transpired, transpired in that period. They, 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 how they were there at the beck and call of Ronald Reagan in the destruction here's of, of, what I, here, of that. Here's what I would appreciate. Yeah. Could you tell us in a, in a more streamlined way, mm -hmm. you know, why do you raise the subject now? What is the, the big problem as you see it now? <clears throat> I raise the subject because when these things are taking place in our, in our little island, we have folks who are of the belief that uh, the United States is coming there because they love us and that they are coming to offer us uh, 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 investments and development and so that is there for the good of the people. And many of our people don't understand that when the United States send the big boys such as Pompey and so forth, to these little islands. They're not sending them there to enjoy the sun and the beach and, 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 and get a nice spliff and so forth and, and to come back to the United States. They are there for a purpose. And it spells, to me, it spells uh, 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 a lot of problems for these little islands. And that I want, the, or I'm trying to alert our people, to get our people to be in, involved in understanding and to looking at what is happening, taking place in our island, rather than to just, just go about their, their, their lives uh, as if nothing is going on when a lot of serious issues are, are taking place in our island, and most of our people don't know it. But what are you saying, what might be the, the, the reason for them being there, specifically? The, well, the, the reason the, for the, the U.S. The, and, and, and Britain for being there in, 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 in the Caribbean, the Chinese, it's all about the exploitation of our, of our island and to keep our people in check. They are trying to tell all these little islands that, uh, as, 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 as Trump referred to, I'm not going to say the word, the S-hole uh, places, and Jamaica was included in that, and the Caribbean, Africa, and so forth. And to this day, these fellows have not, uh, when in their visit, 
with these officials, they never ask them a demand and apology for what they have said, how they are classified our region. And so, I, in my humble opinion, when you look at these small islands and you have these huge embassies, and so forth in this country, in these islands. What is the purpose of, 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 of that kind of, that huge uh, 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 institution there? It is not just there to give out a couple of visas and so forth. The activities that take place that emanate out of these places, it is not working in the interest of our people. And that is my concern. Okay, what is the concern in Jamaica itself? Well, there are those who think like I do. And there are those who are, they feel so beholding to, to their white masters that they can see that nothing white people do to us. They cannot see the, 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 the injustice or the wrongs in what they're doing. They always try to find some good, uh, 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 good coming out of it. And there are those who believe that, uh, I, I have listened to some folks who believe that it, it, it's, it's all right for the United States to come in and to help to solve our problems. Some people have said that uh, uh, the United States could help them uh, uh, get rid of the guns in the country and to solve crime and so forth. And I keep telling them if they can't solve the issue of guns in this, prop, in this country, that is devastating and, 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 and destroying so many communities. And it's so easy to get guns here in this country. How do you expect the United States? What makes you think they are going to try to stop their uh, gun manufacturers from selling and exporting their weapons to, in, in, to the Caribbean and all, all over the world? And what, why, far, why would we want we... them, white folks, to come to Jamaica to solve our If we have any problem with crime, crimes there, why would we expect white folks to come there to solve it when they, this place is riddled with criminalities and crime in high and low places? And we expect them to come down there just as though they're talking about trying to foster democracy and free elections in Venezuela. Well, we are not having it here in this country. In, uh, as far as you know, yes. is there any discernible, organized, movement that espouses many of the things that you are saying or uh, as a warning that uh, this is not a good development. No. Is there it, there's nothing no. happening in Jamaica of that type that uh, raises the political uh, consciousness and the questions that you have raised here today? No, we have two political parties in Jamaica. And uh, when one is out, the other is in. There is no checks and balances to the two parties. The best thing that ever came out of one of the parties in Jamaica is Michael Manley. Mr. Manley was the only politician that I know of that came about that tried to bring about some semblance of justice, some semblance of, 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 of equality in, in, in our resources, in the resource of the country is being uh, redistributed and so forth. No other parties have, 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 have ever done that. And so, since Mr. Manny is gone, nobody wants to talk about Michael because when you mention Michael Manley era, first thing they talk about communism and, and, and social democracy and it's about taking from, from the rich and giving to the poor and all that kind of that. That is why they really don't want to have a serious discussion in this country about the different systems, capitalism, uh, uh, communism, socialism. What, they don't want to have a serious discussion because they don't want any kind of comparison because we have been living under, uh, under this capitalist system for all these years. And what, is that, as, what has it given us? It has continued to suck the life's blood after, out of the poor and put it in the hands of a few. And everybody seems to think that it is right. Nobody wants to discuss the issue. Let's discuss another way, a fair and decent, equitable way of the redistribution of America's wealth. Instead, they keep taking and taking and taking, and the, and the, and the poor, the people who are catching hell and suffering the most, they, some, for some reason, they feel that maybe they feel that it is all right. This is the way it ought to be. They used to tell us when I was growing up as a child that, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. It's just the way, of, you know, that's the way it is. 
That's poppycockery. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, but you know, there's a certain amount of naivete, I must say, mm -hmm. in your position. Mm -hmm. You're acting as if you're so so, so uh, surprised. This is this is the formula. This isn't happening by accident. These I know things that. are part of a formula that has been applied for many, many, many decades now. And it's working when well. It was not, not the United States, it was Britain. When it was not Britain, it was Spain. When it's not Spain, it was Portugal. Exactly. It, it, it's, it keeps going on. So the, the obvious question is, what do you think it would take for people to wake up? I just got you saying a moment ago. You see, in, in the United States, as long as we have the issue of race to deal with, the issue of the immigrants, the document and the documents and so forth, and the system knows how to use the propaganda machine of the media to divide and to conquer our people, we're going to continue to have it unless the people of America, and I, I, I said to you earlier, across the color line, they can see their commonality in, in, in the condition that they're in. And we decide that we're going to do something about it. The brother mentioned earlier about France. Look at what is happening in France. You think the United States will ever reach a stage where you can convince the people that they are of a common interest that they have to stand up against? You think we're going to reach us? That is where we have, we have to get to before we can bring about some changes in this place. Unless we can get there, they will continue to use whatever they have at their control, the media, the, 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 the race issue, all kinds of religion. They use everything at their disposal to keep us divided and conquered. And so sometimes it just seems, my, my professor, that is a, a hopeless case. But... I have to do, I, I can't give up. In the words of that great philosopher, Reverend Jesse Jackson, I'm being facetious. Keep hope alive. <laughs> keep hope alive. Well, we have to leave it there. I thank you very much for your very impassioned contribution today. And hopefully it causes some people to revisit what they thought the problem was and come to new conclusions and along with that some idea of how they can help solve that problem thanks so much for calling in and contributing today thank you all for calling in and contributing this is your program and we we, we can make a lot of progress just talking to each other have yourselves a great weekend bye bye